Hi, Flick here from the Nerd Soapbox, and today we're at the Los Angeles Comic Con, and oh my stars and garters, it's George Buza, uh, the voice of the Beast in the X-Men animated series. Hi, George. Hey, Flick. How you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. How are you today? Not bad. Oh, fantastic. How's your con so far? I've had a good day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had a nice con, a uh, panel. Yeah, yeah. Fans have been thronging around to the table. Fantastic. It's been a good day. Yeah. What, what was your perception of the X-Men prior to being cast as the Beast? Did you uh, read the comics growing up? I did. I was about 11 or 12 years old when the first comic came out. All right. And I had to make a choice there. Was I going to keep reading Superman comics? Yeah, yeah. Or was I going to switch over to the X-Men? What, what did you do? Well, I kept reading both. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> like a true nerd. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah, wear that badge proud, I do. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But what was the audition process like for you? Well, for me, I just got called in, and uh, they didn't tell me exactly what the show was because it was right. a big secret. Yeah, yeah. It said Project X. Oh. But the X kind of gave it away. Yeah, like, they would have called it Project Y or something like that. <laughs> but if you're going to do a show called yeah. The X-Men, you right. call it Project X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that kind of defeating the purpose? Okay. And as soon as I read the lines and I saw that there was the part of Beast and there was Wolverine, yeah, yeah. Well, well, dead giveaway, the right? The Wolverine's out of the bag. Really? Yeah, <laughs> totally. So that's actually made me kind of excited because I knew what I was auditioning for. Right, right. And uh, I really wanted in. Oh, wow. And you got in, too. And I got in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Beast often had the most complicated dialogue because of all the literary references and the techno babble, but you spoke it with such eloquence. Did you ever have any uh, trouble with the dialogue in the recording sessions? Oh, absolutely not. I was an English major in university, okay. so I was familiar with some of those things. Okay. And it was really nice to be able to say them. That's fantastic. Did, 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 do you have a favorite episode or storyline? Well, of course I do. It's called Beauty and the Beast, and the Beast got to fall in love. That's, should we show his heart in that one? No, he did. That's awesome. Yeah, showed his broken heart. Oh. Did it, oh, okay. So, had, had there been a season six, given you know that the X Men lost Professor X, uh, where, where would you have liked the Beast story to go? I would have liked to have found that uh, that lady that he fell in love with, and for them to run off and live happily ever after. Oh, gonna make me tear up here in a second. Well, that's great. That's, that's, that, would be, that would have been fantastic. Now, if you could have one mutant power, what would your mutant power be? George's mutant power. Well, I've always liked the fact that Cal, as Wolverine, could heal so quickly. Oh. And I think that's one of the best powers to have. It's better than being so strong you can beat anybody up. Okay. But to be able to heal instantly, right. that's pretty uh, valuable. Oh, yeah. Especially in today's, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> the healthcare system. Oh, I know. Wow. Save a lot of money on your HMO. Exactly. <laughs> well, how, how did your cameo in Brian Singer's original X-Men uh, film come about? Well, I went into audition for the part, yeah, yeah. and the guy who was the stunt coordinator kind of whispered in his ear, and he says, you realize this is the guy that did the voice of Beast. <laughs> and Brian Singer ta turned to me and he said, you realize that without your series, we wouldn't be making the movie today. And he gave me the part of the trucker, which was five days of work, which is no small thing. Yeah, yeah, and I got to work with Anna Paquin, oh. and I got to work with Hugh Jackman a little bit. Okay. And I got five days of work out of it. That's, you can't shake a stick at that. You can't, that's, that's no. Good. And I was in a major X-Men movie. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so so uh, we've seen Kelsey Grammer and Nicholas Hulot uh, portray uh, Hank McCoy in the live action films. With Disney rebooting the characters for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, who would you like uh, to see play the next uh, Beast? Well, being an old guy, I think both Kelsey Grammer and that other guy you mentioned are a little bit yeah. over the hill. Okay. Like, Beast is supposed to be in his 20s. Right, right. And I'm not really up on actors who are in their 20s now. Okay. So I really couldn't make that decision. All right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm even too old for it. No. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right. I, I don't always trust things I read in uh, IMDb, but according to the trivia section, you're also a biker, a weightlifter, rock, a rock hound, and a philatelist. Is that uh, any truth to any of that? All of that is correct. <gasps> Even philatelist? Absolutely. Whoa. Since I was five years old. Okay. What's your most favorite stamp? 
I don't have a favorite. Yeah, just I like them you all. Like. <laughs> that's, that's great. A real hoarder likes them all. I can't get rid of a single one. <laughs> oh, I love that answer. <laughs> as a true, as a true fanboy myself, I love that answer. Okay, hey, so you've had a lengthy live action career. Um, you worked with George Romero in Diary of the Dead. What was it like working with that uh, legendary horror director? Well, it was very brief. I only did one day. All right. And uh, he did say some very nice things. He said, you do good work, and uh, we'll do something together in the future. Okay. And then he died. <laughs> oh, So there went that. Well, huh? you can't hold it against him. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your take on uh, Santa Claus and a horror story? Well, now, that is one of my very favorite movies. <laughs> I mean, not only did I get to work with one of my all-time idols, William Shatner. Uh, yeah. yeah. The captain? The captain himself. Oh. But I got to uh, play Santa Claus in a completely different vein than what I was used to. He wasn't the oh, you ordinary ho 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 guy. <laughs> he was protecting the North Pole from a bunch of zombies. And he important. was fighting off all these nasty elves that were zombies trying to kill him. Oh, and he was whacking them to pieces. <laughs> there were elf parts flying all over the place. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you like Star Trek? I did. I was a big fan of Star Trek. Who's your favorite captain? Well, Captain Kirk. All right. You're, you're is there another? Man. Is there another? Yeah. Yeah. Mine, mine too. Mine too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What are you working on now? Retirement. Really? Not much. Okay. I do a little bit here and there. I do the okay. odd kitty cartoon. Okay. But more or less, I'm going to Comic Cons now. Okay. I spend a lot of time with my ten grandchildren. That's fantastic. Yeah. They're. They range from age one okay. to age 18. Well, There's right. a whole bunch of them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you take us out with a quote? Maybe uh, something like, uh, as Archimedes said when he discovered the principle of displacement, Eureka! Or well, something like that. <laughs> as Archimedes said when he found the uh, principle of displacement, Eureka! <laughs> wow. Because I can't remember anything more because I'm an old guy. Well, <laughs> you're fantastic. <laughs> You kidding me? Wow, I just really enjoyed our time together. Well, I did too. Thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Well, well you got quite a grip there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is that okay? Wow. You okay? Yeah. The arthritis is killing me. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. All right. Let's see who else we can find at uh, the Los Angeles Comic Con. Go beat up Wolverine. We will. <laughs>